Welcome to 5 Minute School and in today's video we're going to be talking about the effects of shock. In the last video we talked about different classifications of shock so I'm just going to reiterate the points that I made at the beginning of the last video that the definition of shock is a form of cardiovascular collapse and it's due to the acute reduction of circulating blood volume and inadequate perfusion of cells and tissues. And like we already mentioned, if this is uncompensated, these mechanisms will lead to impaired cellular metabolism and death. So the initial thing we have is reduced effective circulating blood volume. And this can be either due to the loss of blood, for example, through hypovolemic shock or by reduced cardiac output for example, via cardiogenic shock and septic shock. Then we have impaired tissue oxygenation, and this is due to the reduced effective circulating blood volume. And this results in the reduced venous return, therefore reduced cardiac output, which means reduced oxygen supply to tissues and organs, and therefore we have tissue anoxia occurs, and this results in cellular injury. Then, due to this cellular injury, we have the release of inflammatory mediators, and this is in response to the cellular injury. The innate immunity of the body is activated, so inflammatory mediators are released. Now, the last point that I'm going to make, the last few points, endotoxins from the wall of bacteria in the cases of septic shock stimulate the release of cytokines as well. Cytokines themselves are pro-inflammatory mediators and they are also released later in the stages in the later stages of shock. And several pro-inflammatory mediators are released from monocyte macrophages, other leukocytes and other body cells. And the most important of these are tumor necrosis factor and interleukin-1. So the main point to remember from this video is the stages of shock uh, are the initial reduced effective circulating blood volume, then we have some impaired tissue oxygenation, and then the release of inflammatory mediators.